He's a multi-millionaire, entrepreneur, and a Shark Tank judge. Mark Cuban was on this show. Jeff, I'm not the first shark to be on your show. You are the good-looking one. Robert Herjavec sharing his secret to success. Would you be as happy if you weren't worth millions and millions of dollars? I'm a pretty happy guy. That's one of the keys to success. And he's taking pitches from us. And <laughs> it's not working, Jeff. It's not working. <laughs> All right, a little about me. I'm recently married. Wow. I work with my wife on this show, and I'm learning how to be a dad to two amazing kids in a blended family. <laughs> I'm hosting a talk show because there's a lot to talk about. This is the adventure. Hello, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Have a seat. Thanks for the nice welcome. Very excited today because uh, we have one of the stars from one of my favorite shows. I watch it every Friday night. You can test me. I'm not just saying this because it's written on a prompter. It's called Shark Tank. It's on ABC. Robert Herjavec is here. He's the, I would say that Robert is, if you have, if you know the show, he's the nice guy. He's the guy in the end, good looking guy, really rich. And he always finds something nice to say in what is a cutthroat show. And uh, I love it. And we have a little, we're going to we're going to pitch him a couple of ideas today that some people have. Who know? Maybe he'll want to invest or maybe he'll say, as they say on the show, for that reason, I'm out. <laughs> Either way, I'm excited to have him. Today, he is a multi-millionaire businessman and was just named Entrepreneur of the Year. But Shark Tank host, he's not a host. He's like a shark. He's like a, he's a. What is he? What is he on Shark Tank? You're not a host, you're a... You're a shark, he's a shark. Robert, Robert Hershevec's rise to magnificent success did not happen overnight. Roll it. One word summarizes Robert Hershevec. Driven. He remembers when he was eight in 1970, sailing from Croatia to Canada with his family. They arrived with nothing but their clothes. Through hard work, they built a better life and sent Robert to college. He founded his own internet security company in 1990, then sold the venture to AT&T for 30 million. But even after he'd made his millions, he didn't rest. His entrepreneurial knack caught the eye of super producer Mark Burnett, who asked Robert to be one of the big fish on ABC's hit show, Shark Tank. Take an average bozo like Robert. All right, I'll step up. There you go. And then bend the knees, get into your carb and your surfing motion. Look at him. Yeah. 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 I remember that episode. Okay. We're back. Robert is here. I said at the top of the show, I am a super fan of the show. It is our, I'm, we're lame enough to only do one thing on Friday night. And nobody's is, lame that watches our show, Jeff. Come good on. Point. Right. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. Friday night and our date night is Shark Tank and we sit on the couch and we, this is what we do. We pause the show with our kids, we pause it when they first pitch you, and we say, who's in? Anybody interested? Then they pitch you a little further, and then before you guys decide, you know, how you're gonna mix it up, we guess if you'll like it, or if Cuban will How like often it. are you right? Uh, you know, it depends. You do, you guys do tend to like we're, certain things. We do. We're pretty unpredictable sometimes. Sometimes you think that we're gonna go for something and it's completely out of the blue. So, who writes the check in your household? If you uh, buy something. If we buy something. Well, it depends which one of If it's the kids, we say, how much of your money would you be willing to invest? Ooh. But they're six. A Ada right, will say something right. like, $100 million. I'll <laughs> we'll say, okay, you don't it's have It's like my daughter, my 14-year-old. Daddy, is he a billionaire? You know, she thinks everybody is a billionaire today. And yes. that's part of the problem with media. You know, I think that people watch our show sometimes and they think it's really easy. But it, it's really hard. It's one, really hard. But <laughs> you remind me. That in America, and this show's on in many countries, you're on right. the same version in Canada, it is possible. You have to work, and you do have to have an idea, but it's possible. It's possible, and you know, I was just talking to Mark about this. I think one of the things that scares me about America today is that success is becoming a dirty word. I make no apologies for my money. I make no apologies. Well, I make... No apologies for my success. You know, my dad came here with nothing, and I came here with nothing. And I don't and know. And you mean nothing? Oh, my friend, I mean nothing. 
And, and it was really hard. And what a great country, America, Canada, that you can get to where I am today. You know, I wake up every day and I think, isn't this great? I'm as happy every day as I was the day before. Would it's you wonderful. be as happy if you weren't worth millions and millions of dollars? I'm a pretty happy guy. Yeah. So you know, just... I think that's one of the keys to success. I read an article that the difference between successful people and people that struggle are successful people exude joy. Jeff, if you're not a happy guy and other people don't want to hang out with right. you, why would they hang out with you? Right. If you're miserable and nobody wants to spend time with you, how are you ever going to get ahead? Yeah, it's Why complain? Well, and you know, I think about that a lot when you think about just the simple thing of, of smiling in a day, Absolutely. how it changes your day. I remember when we were really young, this lesson was taught to me by my dad, and I kind of had a miserable day at school because, you know, the kids make fun of you, you're an immigrant, you're poor. And I came home and I was feeling sorry for myself. And my dad came home, it's going to sound so melodramatic, he walked a couple miles to the factory. I was a blue collar guy and I came home and he just st stood there and I was complaining about my day. Where were you living? Oh, uh, we were living in like a, in, oh, it, this stage would be three times the size in a little oh, apartment. There's, there's a, oh my gosh. Oh, we, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't pleasant. And my dad was just standing there and I was complaining and feeling sorry for myself. And my dad looks at me and says, uh, never complain. You should always be happy with the opportunities given you. And that was it. And so you, you know. You, you feel that big. All right, we have a lot to talk about, uh, including the arguments that they get into on the show, whether or not they're real, because many times they are battling to buy into something like this. Keep your socks on. Shoes. Keep your socks on. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more. You know, it's funny, when I was growing up, everybody said that to me. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Is that true? Investor and Shark from the show Shark Tank. Am I saying your last name right, Herjavec? You know, the proper pronunciation, you'll be the only guy to ever hear this on TV, is actually Herjavec. But my dad came to the customs agent, and the guy said, what's your name? My dad said, Herjavec. And the guy looked at him and said, nobody will ever be able to say that. From now on, your name is Herjavec. Really? And that was it. And your heritage was shifted a little just, right there. Just a little bit. But okay. yes, you're saying it right. Okay, so on this show, there's five of you sitting there, and you all... What? There's four other people on that show? <laughs> <laughs> and you all have this money and experience, enough that you could invest if you wanted to. So a guy comes up or a girl, and they, and they pitch their, their, their product. Sometimes it gets very... It appears to get very heated. It does, and it's it, what most people don't realize, and I'll tell, tell your audience, is most people are in front of us for over an hour. Really? Because it's five minutes on the show. It's five minutes on the show, and we know nothing about them. We don't know their name. We don't know how much money they want. We don't know anything. That surprises me. I would figure you at least had a little bit of a note about something. No, it's real. It's real. And, and yes, it's really our money. None of my friends believe it's really our money and we know nothing about them. But when we're writing those checks, it's really our money. And so, okay, best, I, I, I'm guessing... So the problem is, the guy comes out, and not all of them make a lot of money, but every now and then, some make a lot of money. We had a guy uh, last season come out, a uh, chord buddy. I remember it, for the guitar. And he came out for the guitar, teach you how to play guitar in five minutes. It's fantastic. So before he came on the show, the product cost $39.95. Him and his wife at their kitchen table were selling two to three on a good day. Nine months later, our sales are approaching $2 million. We wow. bought a factory in Alabama. We employ 20 people now. That is... Oh, yeah. yeah. And we just hired John Rich from Big & Rich to represent the product. So that one erases a lot of ones that don't make money. Is there any part of this that Mark Cuban was on this show and he said, you know, part of it, honestly, just is... I'm not the first shark to be on your show. Well, no, I'm OK. All right. But only because he's friends with one of these CBS uh, executives. See, it's, it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's who you know. Yeah, there you go. But we didn't talk this much about Shark Tank. We just talked about, you know, he, was, he wasn't on near as long as you either. Okay. You're the better. only guest. You know, it's funny. When I was growing up, everybody said that to me. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Is that true? So there, well, so there I am. I'm 18 years old. My dad works in a factory sweeping floors, and my mom's a receptionist. So if the key to success in life is who you know, I, I'm in trouble. So I said to right. myself, 
I don't believe that. I believe I got to go out and become the guy that others want to get to know. It's all about what you make of it. Well, one of the things that Cuban said to me, it might have been on the show or off the show, is that part of this for you guys is a little bit of philanthropy in that if there's somebody you believe in and you're not sure right. and the investment isn't a lot, that you might take a flyer just to say, you need a shot and I can give you one. I, I love that. I love that about our show that we can change lives for people. So absolutely for me, I can't disassociate myself away from the investor. I mean, some of the guys like Kevin or Mark uh, can be pretty cruel and cold about it, but, but I can't. And I love the fact we do that for people. We had a woman in the first season called Grill Charms, and we did an investment there, and it changed her entire life. Really? I mean, it's, it's wonderful. But what's the percentage? It's about the money. What's the percentage of, of every 10 that you invest in, how many of those might? So it's a great question. Everybody's different. When I invest... I expect to get my money back. So I'm pretty involved with the entrepreneurs. Like when uh, Cord Buddy went to Canada to do the shopping channel and QVC, I went with him. Like, I worked really, really hard for my money. When I give it to somebody, uh. I expect to get it back. All right, when we come back, we're gonna see what Robert thinks of some entrepreneurs that we have here in our studio, and maybe we'll be able to go in on something together. <laughs> or we'll say, in the words of Shark Tank, for that reason, I'm out. Well, I'm happy to write your check. <laughs> oh, you're not, you may not invest at all. We'll see. We'll be right back. <laughs> a lot of moms backstage, a lot of the women were going, wow, that's interesting. Jeff will write you a check. <laughs> <laughs> Closed captioning for the Jeff Probe Show provided by... We're back with Robert Herjavec from Shark Tank. And now a dream come true for a couple of people, a chance to get in front of one of the sharks. First up, Zach and Candace, tell us about your idea. All right, well, first off, what we did is we created the Zandy chair. It's the first ever patented vacuum wet dry vac attachment to a high chair because babies created. How many parents do we have in here that have young kids or have been around young kids when they eat? Yep. Messy. Messy. <laughs> they make a giant mess, whether it's on the tray, on the, in the seat, on the floor, or even the baby itself. And as my wife will show you how it works, I'll continue to talk. The babies eat multiple times throughout the day, right? So this actually helps streamline that process to help with the convenience of cleaning it so you don't have to get a, another handheld vac to help clean it up. You don't have to get a mop. You don't have to get uh, a Swiffer. Everything can be all-inclusive all as you clean it up. So what I've done is I've actually streamlined the time throughout the day to help clean up the mess that's created with the baby actually eats, and we're actually offering just basically selling convenience. My first impression, honestly, I, I don't get it. Why wouldn't you just grab a handheld vac and do that? The novelty, the biggest difference that you have is for up here is for all the messy goo, spaghetti, everything that can be put up here. So rather than having to clean that up, you just shove it in the hole and it goes in the back. You just shove it in the it hole, down. it goes down. This is just a prototype. It would be a smooth, smooth um, I will say, right here. a lot of moms backstage, mm -hmm. a lot of the women were going, wow. <laughs> That's interesting because they, even my wife Lisa said, man, it's a mess when you have a kid up there. There's definitely a demand, but you know, part of having a great business is not mm -hmm. just finding a demand for something, mm -hmm. it's finding something you can sell. Right. So mm -hmm. I, I, I like the idea because, I mean, it's been a long time since my kids were making that big a mess. Sure. Now that you see their clothes on the floor, if you can, if you can fix that <laughs> with a vacuum cleaner. But the problem is you've got to get distribution. So mm -hmm. you don't make the high chair. I assume you don't make the vacuum cleaner. So what you've done is you've taken two products that already exist in the market mm -hmm. and put them together. So, so think of it, I'm a consumer, I walk into a store, I'm buying a high chair. How are you gonna get your product to market? Do you have to invent a new high chair? Or do you have to go to all the high chair manufacturers and cut a deal with them? There has to be a new uh, mold made. So let's it. say you walk into Jeff's high chair manufacturing company. Right. Jeff's sitting there and he says, Oh, great idea. Let me just redo my molds and add a vacuum to it. Well, What's because different about yours? Because I own all the, all the proprietary rights to it. It's, it's this patented. is what goes on on it's, Shark Tank. Every, and they keep it's fighting. It's U.S. patented. And it's, they try to pitch him back. And they're it's all about love, him. Jeff. There's no fighting <laughs> going on I mean, on you know, here. it's combative. Know. But you're right. In the words of Shark Tank, I can already tell if I'm at home watching, you're out. I, I see more challenges than opportunities. I'm sorry. I'm out. But... Mm -hmm. Jeff will write you a check. 